Hey guys, in today's video I want to talk to you about why the Fujifilm X100V is still the best camera that money can buy, period, no matter what you're looking for. Uh, this is not clickbait, this is not me making something up. Yes, there are other cameras that I'll prefer for certain things, especially whenever it comes to shooting stuff like sports for myself, but at the same time, there is nothing better than a Fujifilm X100V for professionals with portrait photography, wedding photography, event photography, um, documentary photography, um, people that are hobbyists, enthusiasts, uh, people who like wildlife, nature, whatever, etc., etc. There are a lot of features, options, accessories, and things that can go along with the X100V to be able to do almost anything you can think of, along with the fact the X100V, the ease of use, the amazing um, processor in it, the great sensor, the color, the Fujifilm recipes, the size, the weight, the weather ceiling, all of these things make for the best overall um, total package of a camera that you are going to find no matter what. Now I know a lot of people are going to bring up, well, you haven't messed with any of Leica's Q system. I actually have. I actually owned a Leica Q and I actually would no matter what 100% still prefer the X100V and its 35 millimeter lens over the Leica Q system. Now is the lens as great as the Leica Q 28mm 1.7? No, it's not. That's the greatest lens I've ever used on that Leica Q. But at the same time, it still does not change the fact that as a whole, the whole X100V ecosystem with accessories as well as with um, just usability and the proper things and mechanics in it, uh, it blows every other camera out of the water whenever you're looking at it respectively. It's just a camera that gets the damn job done. So with that, I just want to put that out there before I get into these. Yes, there are niche situations where you would want to go for something else. And yes, before you guys say it in the comment, I know you guys are going to say, I still prefer the Leica Q. I like the colors. I like the lens. And listen, I'm just going to tell you right now, if it wasn't for you being able to use hashtags, no one would not only give a shit about your Leica Q images, but they wouldn't be able to tell their Leica Q images in a vacuum. So it really doesn't matter to me. But with that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. I've got a list and just like my GFX 100S, 50S2, 50R, 50S video where I went over the GFX system and how I felt about it, including everything from lenses to just just the system and the bodies themselves. I'm going to be reading off of a list. I will not have a lot of pictures in B-roll for the sake of that's not what I do and what I'm about. Everything you're going to see are images that I've taken with the camera because that is what should speak volumes, not how a camera looks and the aesthetic, even though that's going to be the first thing that I address. So when it comes to the build quality and the look of the X100V, it is fantastic. It is a great, beautiful, fantastic build quality in that camera. Um, everything is solid. The corners are nice and sharp. It's got a nice little bevel at the very, very top. The buttons are in a good placement, although I will say the number one thing that I have an issue with the X100V is the buttons are small as hell. And it's something that as someone with larger hands and a large thumb, um, yeah, I'm able to reach everything. I'm not really pressing things accidentally, the Q button's out of the way, but they're just so damn small and there isn't a lot of positive feedback on those like they have on the GFX system or on the X-Pro3 or on other cameras like the X-T line of cameras. The X100V does not have as positive a feedback, but other than that, everything is great. The, the look is great, very nostalgic to older film cameras, which a lot of people love. It has the, my favorite orientation of a rangefinder patch orientation where the uh, EVF and OVF are on the left side of the camera. It's easier for me because I have a larger nose, but also it's just easier for me because I like not being behind the camera. I like not having my full face pressed up against it. So it is a favorite for me. The aesthetic is beautiful. It's great. It's very well built, metal all around, um, and it just feels amazing. And if you pair it with a... Um, a grip, a thumb grip from, um, let's say I have one from Lensmate, um, it's even better because the hold is there. It is another thing I'll give it. It has more of a grip than like a Q. It's good for someone with large hands like me. Um, it's just nice feeling in the hands. Ergonomics are pretty decent, especially for the size. A lot of small cameras, um, have an issue where they try to have feeling of a big camera and it doesn't work and a lot of big cameras are still trying to be small cameras The X100V fits perfectly in that towards a small camera But it feels big enough in the hand to be able to hold correctly one last thing whenever it comes to buttons I wish there were more programmable buttons meaning I wish Fujifilm would add more and I wish Fujifilm would bring that back the d-pad uh, In my opinion, that's the biggest mistake that a lot of companies can make is foregoing a d-pad to a scroll wheel or Eliminating it completely scroll wheels fail more often than d-pads and more often than not 
spot. They will fail every single person, no matter what. With that being said, um, everything is still nice. It's Buttons are still where they should be, but they're too small and there's too few of them. I wish I could program and map more things just to make it easier for me because I go from shooting continuous to shooting single autofocus. A lot of times I want to, you know, be able to map certain things to assign for my teleconversion lenses, um, for my digital conversion so I can go from a 50 millimeter to a 72 millimeter to a 110 millimeter focal length view. Um, all these things, I wish I could map it easier than the My Menu, which makes it easier, but it's still not the same. So the biggest thing on the X100V that makes it the most enjoyable is in fact that lens. The lens is tack sharp all the way in center sharpness from F2 all the way to F11 and past that you begin to run into some diffraction. Although I'm not a person who shoots charts and things like that, using this for my paid everyday work, whether documentary, portrait photography, announcement photography, or for even sports photography, like with the San Antonio missions and some of the uh, photos that I was able to take before the game while I was on the field, um, you know, the thing is sharp. Shooting it at F2 is a joy. You're able to still get nice cream bokeh, especially if you add on a TCL adapter that I'll add in later. But at 35 millimeter, it still does the exact same thing. And this lens is a 23 millimeter F2 lens, which is a 35 millimeter effective focal length in a full frame camera. Now it still operates and has the same properties as a 23 millimeter lens. So you're not gonna get the same bokeh just because you have to understand how depth of field works. But at the same time, it's still very pleasing. You add on TCL adapter, it still works great. The lens is sharp from about 2.8, which is very, very amazing, all the way to F8 is when it's at its sharpest, um, whenever you're talking about center sharpness, and then corner sharpness is never an issue. Micro contrast is greatly improved from the X100F. This is a huge step up from the X100F whenever it comes to the, um, the lens, and for that alone, it would be good enough to upgrade to it. The lens is probably the best part of this camera. It's fantastic, it's amazing, it's never failed me, it's always been sharp, everyone's always been pleased with the images that have come out. Micro contrast is great, lots of detail, um, lots of information, whether um, through the way it renders, even with coloring, it's a very neutral color set. This lens is technically, um, in my opinion, from what I've seen, using a similar formula, it has to be, as what the 33 1.4, the 23 1.4 Mark II, and the 50 millimeter 1.0, as well as the 7300, 70 to 300, have going when it comes their optical, optical formula. Maybe not able to resolve as much, but when it comes to the lens formula and how much detail you're getting, it is right on par. One thing that's gonna prohibit a lot of people from giving the X100V a shot is the fact that it only has one single SD card slot. To this, I will just say flat out, um, if you've ever shot film or if you do shoot film, I want you to let me know which film cameras allow you to, to shoot two rolls of film at the same time so you have redundancy. And if you hear crickets, that's because there's not one. And I also want to ask those of you who started off early in DSLR, how, how long it took you to be able to get to a dual card slot or a CFast, CF, and an SD card slot equipped camera uh, before you realized that was professional. Listen, you guys, a lot of the things with the dual card slot stuff has to do with the fact that manufacturers are able to manipulate us and they think that some some things are more professional than others, so for that extra dual card slot, they just charge you more. A lot of you guys I know shoot JPEG and RAW, and you would never want to put your JPEGs out there to a customer if your RAW car failed, and a lot of you shoot RAW redundant to both, or you just shoot continuous, which then again makes no sense, just buy a larger SD card. In my opinion, having a single SD card isn't that big of a deal. Um, it's not something to write off about. Yeah, it's always great to have redundancy, but a lot of times, number one, people don't use it. A lot of times, number two, we never even think about about, oh, I'm glad I have two SD card slots whenever we're using a, a camera with two SD card slots. And we're also not freaking out about, oh, I wish I had two SD card slots when we're using a camera with one SD card slot while we're shooting. My advice to you, if you're worried about that, buy better SD cards. Um, I personally use Lexar for everything from Fujifilm because that's what Fujifilm uh, has recommended in the past. Um, and I have only had issues with SanDisk cards myself um, whenever they're not the SanDisk Pro. So spend the extra money on a good SD card as well as spend the extra money on a good SD card uh, data retriever software for about 60 bucks and you'll always be good and you'll never have to worry about it. It is always better to be able to retrieve than not because no matter what, even if it has a dual card slot, the way some of us shoot, not me specifically, but the way some of you guys shoot, um, even if you had the dual SD card slots, you would still be screwed if one of your cards went out. That was the current one that was riding to RAW or even if you're riding redundant. The weather sealing in the Fujifilm X100V isn't legitimate weather sealing. You actually have to buy an adapter to be able to adapt a um, filter of some, core, of some sort. I have the B&W uh, 49 millimeter clear filter as well as the Glimmer Glass 1 filter to be able to put on them. But 
um, it's not a legit weather sealing. You have to add something else. The problem with that is now I have to buy, now I have to spend money on a filter and I have to spend money on an adapter to be able to put the filter on the front because I can't um, just straight up uh, put a filter on there because of the way the in and out focusing on the mechanism works. So because of that, um, I have to spend more money uh, on top of the price for the X100V. I think that's total bullshit and I think that's a money grab. And I think the fact that Fujifilm's adapter is almost $100 is even more bullshit because it's again, just a money grab. Again, for that reason alone, I'm telling you, never buy Fujifilm straight proprietary things. Buy from JJC, buy from Haug, buy from Lensmate, because Fujifilm doesn't deserve to get the extra cash for bullshitting us in the first place after they told us it's weather sealing with a little asterisk. So no, it's not completely weather sealed, but once you put those things on there in the filter, you can buy a Hogue filter set with a, with a square hood, the way it looks super cool. Um, things go really well, it always works. I've never had issues with any dust or anything like that on the mechanism or on the lens itself or any moisture or anything. And I I have used it in the rain. It's a great camera, great system, but um, Fujifilm really pulled some bullshit with that and I don't agree with it. I don't give them my money um, past a new lens or a new camera and most of the time I actually buy everything used so I don't have to give money to them direct. Even though the weather ceiling isn't legit, the ND filter is. This is about a three-stop ND filter that's built into the camera that you can use for both photo and for video and I use it all the time. Plain and simple fact is it works. I don't have to think about it. It's easy to get to. I'm able to assign it to either a button or on my personalized menu and to be able to get to it when I need to. And it works. It doesn't get in the way. It doesn't uh, you know, ruin things. It doesn't make things more cumbersome. I just have to remember to put it on and that's it, it works. It allows me to be able to use high sync flash whenever I'm shooting in daylight terms uh, or in daylight situations and it allows me to get nice enough video from using this, which video is very decent, but I'm not gonna talk about that in this video because it's the same video capabilities as basically like the X-Pro3, the X-T3, the X-T4. Everything's all still the same, but I don't have the specs on runtime and everything. It doesn't shoot 10 bits, so don't worry about that. But the Indy filter is great. There's really nothing more to say about it. When you have an Indy filter that works, it works. The one thing I will say is if they can put an Indy filter on this small ass camera, I wish they would start putting Indy filters built in into their larger cameras all maybe the X-H2, potentially the X-Pro4, um, and even in the X-T line. But in the X-100V, it's perfect, it's excellent. Fujifilm, hats off for that. Another thing that comes with this camera is the amazing quiet leaf shutter. And I mean, it's amazing and it's quiet. It's literally like a whisper. Um, I've tried to do it on this mic. The only issue is, me actually pressing my shutter is louder than the leaf shutter. So you couldn't hear the leaf shutter at uh, because I was actually having to press the shutter. That's how quiet it is. But you can still feel the feedback whenever you're shooting, which I, which I know is important to a lot of people, especially if you can't hear. The, the leaf shutter is great, man. You're able to shoot high speed sync with this because of leaf shutter. Again, it's quiet, it's great for street photography, great for indoor. You don't have to rely on mechanical shutter anymore, which can introduce wobble and things like that. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about with rolling shutter. Uh, whenever you have a mechanical um, shutter and you have a low shutter uh, speed, you're losing, you're losing that um, negative because you can always shoot in a mechanical shutter because that leaf shutter is so amazing man it's so quiet I'm telling you I literally held it up here and then when I listened back I was like shit it's it's you can only hear me pressing the shutter because it's that quiet fantastic another thing that's really making the X100V fantastic is the fact that you're not stuck with that 35 millimeter focal length you can actually buy two types of adapters for it that change it to a 50 millimeter and a 28 millimeter effective focal length in full frame terms one of those would be the WCL2 or the WCL1 adapter or the TCL2 or the TCL1 adapter WCL is wide conversion lens TCL is tele conversion lens so uh, the only difference between the marks 1 and 2 of each one of them is the mark 2s have a little magnet on the inside that you can actually put uh, that is put in there so that whenever you're twisting it onto the camera it automatically tells the camera which lens is on there so you don't have to go in the settings and change it I bought the version one didn't really worry about it just went there changed the settings and then just got over uh, got over it as far as the TCL it's fantastic it's my top portrait lens it's the one that I use I'm always putting it on I'm shooting a lot the micro contrast still great it does not get hazy you do not lose any um, clarity whenever it comes to these images one thing I do have to say is a lens is so good it transfers to the glass and the WCL and the TCL because or WCL and the TCL 1 and 2 because they're the same optical formulas um, it's fantastic it's great it doesn't make the lens look uh, the camera look too big by the way that's something that's been way overblown it is it doesn't make it un, uh, unbalanced it doesn't make it weighty. it doesn't make it stick out more it it's it's not that big of a deal and it's not gonna freak anyone out but it does give you a great added uh, bonus and benefit now I can take my 35 millimeter lens that's sharp as 
and put it on a, uh, to a 28 millimeter effective focal length or a 50 millimeter effective focal length. And these are cheaper used market than the regular lenses. So basically you're getting a 35 F2, a 23 F2 and an 18 F2, all weather resistant because once you put them on there, it actually weather seals the camera. Um, and if you have your filter on the 35 millimeter, the native lens, it weather uh, makes it weather resistant. So it's like you have the Fujicron system um, all there at F2, looking really nice and fantastic, really sharp, great clarity and everything on your X100V cheaper than you would if you were to buy the X Pro 3 and buy those three lenses along with it. I think that's something that's great. It's something that's fantastic. For those of you saying, oh, well, you can't uh, you know, put on new lenses. Well, you can do this and it does make a huge difference and it is fantastic. On the X100V, you have what's called digital lens conversion or digital teleconversion uh, lenses. And what this does is on your native 35 millimeter lens, it takes you from a 35 millimeter to having two extra potential focal lengths, which I believe is 50 millimeter and 72 millimeter. That's great and that's fantastic. But what's even better is you can still do this on the TCL adapter and the X100V uh, recognizes it recognizes it and it takes you from 50 millimeter to 72 millimeter and then to 110 millimeter. So you're able to get three more focal lengths out of that adapter. So all together, with everything counted, technically you have starting at 28 millimeter, you have an opportunity to get 28 millimeter, 35 millimeter, 50 millimeter, 72 millimeter, and then 110 millimeter. This gives you five focal lengths. Now these are shooting JPEG only when you do the digital conversion because the regular image comes back as just whatever focal length you have on there. It's 50, 35, 28, whatever. But on the JPEGs, you're getting at least six megapixels, which is more than enough to be able to print out a good and clear and quality eight by 10 image. It's something that I've actually done myself and given to clients. So you're able to use your amazing Fujifilm film recipes um, and film simulations when shooting with people, maybe for fun, or you're shooting a model client and if they want something, you're able to give them the immediately immediate JPEG at a longer focal length. It's something I've used in sports when shooting for the San Antonio missions as well. Yes, I use the X100V to get a couple images um, shooting straight out of camera JPEG with an Eterner profile built in. Um, and it's something that I've used quite a bit in everything else. It is great. It gives a nice little bit of feeling of faux compression as well. And it really rounds out your full kit. So you can actually have your X100V go from just having one lens and people complaining about it to potentially having five lenses for, I mean, I got mine in the used market for a really good deal. So altogether, if I was to buy all those, I could have an X100V, which is basically an X Pro 3. Let me, let's just call it what it is. It's basically an X Pro 3 with a, with a silent or leaf shutter um, and five focal lengths and five lenses for under $1,600. To me, that's a deal. So that's one of the biggest reasons why I think this camera is so fantastic because I used it for all, a lot of my professional work and a lot of my professional things. I'm sticking on this point the long is because I'm telling you that the teleconversion and the WCL, uh, they are amazing. The wide conversion lens, the teleconversion lens, they are really what makes us an even better system. Not only because the X100V is amazing and the quality from the sensor to everything else, to the processing, to the fact the lens, the silent shutter, the weather ceiling, but those two things really make it max out and it's just ability to give you a great system due to the fact of how cheap they are and how amazing the images that still come out in JPEG when using that teleconversion all the way to 110 um, millimeters. It's, it's amazing. So now that we've talked about that, a lot of people are gonna say, well, uh, how does it focus? Well, I'll talk to you about focus as a group um, or in whole. It's great, it's fantastic. Continuous and on single shot, it is amazing. Um, it acquires focus really well, even in low light. The ability of having the OVF is actually really helpful because you can see your subject and still get focus. And the EVF is great because out of focus hits almost every time it works, it's fantastic. Um, I love it. Even with the TCL adapter, everything's working just fine. It's focusing quick, it's not chimping or chirping um, and it's not really struggling. It's just a great system. Um, I love the focus speed. It's great. Continuous also works very well. Um, tracking things left and right, having to move the camera, um, it, it'll struggle a little bit, but it just depends on the focusing type that you have it on, whether all, um, sometimes it'll get things, but again, you can adjust settings to make it work more for you. Is it Sony A1 um, status? No, it's not. 
but it is damn good and you'll never have an issue with the focus. Now one thing that I use specifically for street photography is I'll stop this bad boy down to about F8 and I use zone focus and I switch it to manual focus. So now once I'm in zone focus at F8, everything from about two meters to infinity is going to be in focus. And I'll just go around the city and just snap like that. So I know everything in front of me is going to be in focus. I don't really have to worry about anything else. I can switch it to 50 millimeter and then still be, you know, anywhere from two meters to about 16 meters be in focus. It's, it's fan. Fantastic. It's great to use. So focus no matter what the X100V is to live for. I love it. It's worked It's worked great. One of the last things to talk about in this is the image quality and the colors. The image quality and the color is great just as you expect from Fujifilm. You're getting the exact same 26.1 megapixel sensor that is on the Fujifilm X-T4, the X-Pro3, etc, etc. You're getting a great camera and you're getting a great system with processor, with sensor, every single thing. And so there's nothing really to tell you that's anything new. The film simulations are all there. You have classic you have Eterna, you have your classic Chrome, you have your Acros, you have your Sepia. It is fantastic. You're able to do so many things by using uh, something like Fuji X Weekly to be able to create more and more and more film simulations and recipes. So the colors are great. One of the other things too, whenever it comes to sensor and color is the JPEGs that come out are automatically corrected. And it's actually what I would use when I was shooting in low light more often than not as I would shoot JPEG, JPEG plus raw so that I could use my Eterna profile, which is going to have a flatter base and I would have a lot less grain and the images would look a lot cleaner whenever I was shooting um, in lower light and it's something that I use a lot of times. So Fujifilm makes it very, very easy to get pleasing images, JPEG and RAW and the sensor capabilities matched up with the actual system with the ability to have film profiles just takes it another step. My favorite ones are one that I've made for Eterna when it comes to portraits as well as a Pro 400H profile and a nostalgic negative profile that I made to copy the GFX system. And with this whole thing wrapped in one, the camera's great, man. You, you, you really can't go wrong with it. So that's it with the X100V. These are my experiences. And listen, I am someone who bought the X100V the first time and was not a fan of it because I didn't understand it. I wasn't a 35 millimeter shooter, so I had a lot of issues with it. A lot of issues with the way that my images were coming out because the way that I would choose to layer because I'm so used to 28 millimeter. But the more and more I used it, the more and more I understood exactly not only how amazing this camera is, number one, but number two, just how great of a tool this is for every single person. Listen, if someone tells you that a camera isn't professional, then they're not professional. But there is something that comes from the fact that a camera is so capable that if they say it's a professional, it's bullshit. The Fujifilm X100V is so capable of everything that if anyone tells you that it's not a professional camera, they've lost their mind. The lens is sharp. The processing is fast. The film simulations are amazing. Uh, the fact that you can put on TCL adapters, I mean, it really, it's just kind of like being very, very picky. Am I gonna use it for wildlife and sports all the time, primarily? No, I did use it for sports so when I got some amazing images. And am I gonna do something with it, like, you know, I'm gonna try to take it underwater or shoot a full length video with it? No, I'm not. But what I am gonna do is everything else in between underneath the sun, this camera is more than enough to handle each and every single one of these things. I just think that we kind of allow ourselves to get dragged into this idea of bigger is better and better means more professional. And in this idea that I have to have a big glass or a big body or I have to have um, a big sensor or this, that, and the other for me to create amazing artistic and um, sought after images that'll get me more work and get me more recognition. Listen, if you're taking photos to be recognized by people, you're gonna be disappointed because recognition doesn't come immediate and it doesn't come easy, especially if you're the kind of person who is copying someone else's style, trying to make it yours because you feel like if they like that, then they can like me. Listen, it's best to just be you, be your own person and do things that make you stand out, not because you want to stand out, you're doing it intentionally, but because people see the authenticity and your creativeness. And the X100V employs that and it makes that happen. Now, again, I'm the kind of person who, like I said, I'm not going to put B-roll of a lot of things and I'm not going to give you a lot of b-roll footage of me taking this camera out and about because that's not me and is my channel gonna blow up like everyone else's no 100% not because I'm not giving the people that thing and that's just saying Peter McKinnon proven style the Faisal Westcott proven style of things that happen but what I'm here to do is give you God honest opinions and for those of you that have been on the channel you will understand that my approval of the X100V makes it only the third item from Fujifilm that I have said is hands down something that I would recommend to people 
followed by the X-Pro2 and the X, or sorry, the X-Pro3 and the X-H1. Um, besides that, I've been very critical even as they've allowed me to use their things, which is the reason why I have a tumultuous relationship with them. And so whenever I say the X100V is a great all-around camera and the best camera money can buy, I'm not saying it to bullshit you and to be able to get an opinion and be able to get the Leica fanboys in here to come cry about why this, that, and the other, and the Fujifilm, the Sony fanboys, and people to tell me about, oh, well, you must not be professional because I need this, this, and I need bokeh. I'm saying this because there are real photographers out there who no matter what they're given can create something great. And there are people who are wanting to start somewhere but they don't have the means and the funds to buy these $1,500 lenses to go with this $3,000 body. And I'm telling you, with this camera that's small enough to take everywhere, the size is great, the build is great, the lens is fantastic, the focus is amazing, with all these things wrapped together in one, you can start what you're doing and be not only professional, but create compelling and fantastic images, not just because you're compelling and fantastic, but because the camera is compelling and fantastic. And where those two intersect, where great skill and passion meet with the correct tool, you're able to create a lot of good things. And I think that's why the Fujifilm X100V not only will become a cult classic, and right now is just plain simple period the best camera money can buy but it will go down as probably one of the most influential and greatest cameras that has ever been created and in my opinion is the best camera that's been made in the past 20 years so with that being said um, I hope you guys enjoy this one if you have any questions let me know and if you're upset about anything have a good one